How's, how's my audio with um, the wind? Uh, you're good. I can't hear I just it. see your shirt. I just see your okay. shirt blowing in the wind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Got it. Sounds good. All um, right. We're recording? We're recording. So whenever you want to go, try. All right. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to the show, everybody. This is the Sandcast Podcast. I'm uh, recording out here from Hawaii today. Travis is back in Cali. And we are presented to you by Wilson Volleyball. Today is a, a very special podcast because we have one of the greatest players of all time and one of the greatest people of all time on the show, Misty May Trainer. Misty, welcome. Hello. How are you? <laughs> We're good. We, uh, we've been looking forward to getting this podcast in for a while now. I know. You put yeah. me down and then everything happened and then I forget and you know how it is with kids and then life. It just... <laughs> It gets crazy, oh, and then totally. I'm like, oh, crud, I forgot to get back then. And then it's like weeks later, and I'm like, oh, oh I forgot to answer back. No problem. And then, but I'm glad we were able to find out, you know, find a time to talk. And Oh, for sure. We, we knew we'd get it in eventually at the yeah. right time. Never any hurry. Yeah, some guy we've been trying to, yeah, exactly. There's I, I of, understand uh, that. I run on there. Hawaiian time, so I understand. There's no <laughs> hurry. It's like, you know, you'll get to the finish when you get to the pit. It's like, yeah. it all works out. <laughs> yep exactly so uh, that's a good attitude to have right now yeah okay Seriously. what can you do <laughs> right. how uh how was the halloween for you though? i know obviously a little different than normal did you guys try to go trick-or-treating or is it like kind of no trick-or-treating down there and no we um it was weird because our neighborhood like the day before our um youngest the twins, they'll be three. It's actually my dad's birthday on Saturday and then the twins on the seventh and the twins turn three on the ninth. But at their daycare, they had like a drive through trick or treat. And I've never done a trunk or treat before. It was kind of actually cool. Okay. Except we were one of the last cars to go through because they devised it by last name. And they just, uh -huh. I mean, the kids were high on candy because they just, we were one of the last cars. So they're like, oh, good. You get all the leftover, you know, leftovers. Oh. Um, but after that, we drove around the neighborhood and we moved, we recently moved and we did a big thing in Long Beach every year. We decorate our house and we did decorate our house again this year. Um, but just driving around the sense was, I didn't think people were really set up for Halloween. You, it wasn't right. as, you know, the decorations weren't as prominent as they had been yeah. in the past. So we were like, okay, I don't know how it's going to be. And then you got to prepare your young, you know, child, like, Hey, we're not going to go around. Like, we may only get a couple of trick or treaters, or yeah. who knows. But um, one of her really good friends invited us to go walking with them in Long Beach. So we went to like our old neck of the woods, and okay. everybody was safe. They did the shoots, you know, shoot the candy in the basket. It was a little more oh, festive. Yeah. It was a little more festive in that area just because there's a lot of kids yeah, in right. that area. And I think all the families know each other, so they kind of plan something. Um, obviously, people were social distancing, masks, and yeah. all that. But um, I mean, they came back with some of the best candy. So we did do our trick-or-treating. <laughs> um, we dressed up, um, the whole family. And so we, I mean, we still made it yeah, as fun yeah. as we could. Yeah, right. for the kids. And yeah. Good. That's funny. I, I, remember I saw a commercial of one of the carpeting companies out here in Hawaii. And they were like selling the big tubes separately from like the tubes that they roll their carpet around. Right, usually. yeah. They were like decorating them and like, making money off these tubes because yeah people because would stand COVID. on their doorstep and then they'd shoot the, and it was actually kind of fun for the kids too you know right yeah um but like it's a just candy slide. it's just weird or you know there'd be tables set outside with you know pick candy and you'd have to remind the young kids and we'd have malia like help the twins like just make sure one piece you know don't <laughs> take yeah. the whole thing but it was, it was neat they got to dress up and they had fun and um yeah now it's almost like on to Christmas, you know, who knows about Thanksgiving, like Thanksgiving is what, Thanksgiving. it's just, just always to, gets forgotten about <laughs> on, to, on to Christmas, even Costco, you go there before Halloween was even over. I mean, they just, that's crazy. Just booting the jack-o'-lantern and everything. Just going to be the one holiday. holiday. Yeah. The <laughs> holiday season. It's so hard to like, for us, that's like off season. And I feel like that's the hardest time to like eat healthy and like get back in shape. And we're like trying to get in better and better shape as Christmas approaches. And it's just so hard, especially out here in Hawaii when everybody's having a barbecue like every other night. There's, and there's not, I mean, there's nothing you can do. And I, I think as an athlete, 
to yeah you you want to eat as best as you can but don't starve yourself if there's something right, you're yeah. craving it's like okay then you know have it you guys yeah. burn so much calories and we burn so much it's Certainly. when you start doing what i'm doing which is nothing really not playing anymore <laughs> you know i got a metal knee then you got to start watching what you eat because you're not burning those calories like you you know i'm right, not 18 right, anymore yeah, yeah. i'm not 1920 yeah totally yeah i've been 30. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask, what uh, what's the day-to-day -day looking like for you these days? Um, I resigned from Long Beach City, which I'm happy in. I, you know, God bless all those that have been hit by COVID, that are dealing with COVID. Um, I try to always look at the positive, you know, and I mean, obviously there's nothing positive with COVID except for it's allowed me as um, to eliminate I don't want to say unnecessaries, but really kind of rechannel my focus because as a player, you're gone all the time. You're not around family. So it's actually brought me back in and mm -hmm. more family time uh, with our firstborn. I was coaching and I didn't, I don't want to say I didn't have that connection with her, but you know, Matt had to pull a lot of the weight while I was in the gym at night. And um, I eliminated that coaching position to be with the kids more. And um, I think this whole, um, pandemic has helped me and many other people realize kind of what's the what's the center of our soul and our our being yep. and really it makes everything else very and I've always known like to me volleyball yeah it was an important part of my life and a career but it's so small in the whole scheme of life you know right uh, yeah. to take it I don't want to say take it too seriously but it's like you never know you know if you put yeah. all your eggs in one basket and don't enjoy what's around you I mean, you'd be a wreck right now because you're like, right. I have nothing, you know, I have nothing. Right. But if you just enjoy what you're doing every time you wake up and try to make it the best day, that's all you can kind of ask for. So it's helped me eliminate uh, Long Beach City and then our club, it cut the club season short. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, you know what? I don't need a, I don't need a club because that's a huge commitment too. Right. Cut that short. I give some lessons. I don't advertise and it's like word of mouth. But um, I, I don't want to say I pick and choose either because to me right now, being home with family, we move, being able to organize my home and um, just kind of recenter myself, work on working out again and mm -hmm. um, seeing the colors instead of a blur right. has been like the main point. Uh, that's, that's such a good yeah. mindset to have. Is, this, is that kind of a newer the thing that you're embracing or have you always had that like even when you were playing and just traveling all the time and when it is really easy to have life get into that blur that you were talking about have you always kind of had that like all right volleyball is still just a small piece of a, a really big picture I think I don't want to say that's why I did so well um obviously I, I mean Carrie and I we balanced each other out Holly and I you know I'm I got to go back and look at VHS and I've actually transferred all VHS. I found when Holly and I won our first tournament, I watched awesome. um, when Carrie and I, you know, won our first cowbell. And so I have all those on um, hard drive now, which is great. Um, I even have videos. I watch, I watched Karch and Lambo play the other day. I was like, Oh, I, found it. <laughs> like, I was like, there they are. And I just stopped throw, you know, cause it's like, takes you back. But yep. I, and I always joke. I'm like, Oh, that's the Hawaiian in me I just kind of even keel you know and I yeah. um I think I get that from my dad and from my parents like okay you, uh, you snag something you're gonna cry about it, or you're just gonna okay let's cut it and let's move on life you know you you have to deal with what life gives you and I think that helped me as a player because a lot of people would say hey you just never looked rattled out there you never like showed emotion Carrie was more the emotion and I was more right. of the I don't want to say yeah. flatliner but like right. bring the calm because when are somebody's going to win somebody's going to lose that doesn't mean um that you're any worse than they are it's it's a game you know and that's 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 what makes it fun but at the end of the day as an athlete i just didn't want to get outworked like i didn't want to not put in the time and then have it backfire when that's something right. i can control yeah but there's a lot of things yeah. you can't control this is something we can't really control um and so that's, I just kind of stay even keel. And I, I think it bothers a lot of people. My husband doesn't quite understand it, like how I don't get so flustered, but I'm like, oh, life goes on, you know, what are you going to do? Yep. Life goes on and you just got to figure that out. And, you know, 
uh, my mom passing away, that taught me a lot. That was one of my lows and I wanted to leave the sport. That taught me a lot. Why? Because we're only here for a small period of time. It may seem like a long time, but we're only here for a small period. Some smaller than others. We don't, we don't really right. know. And you right. just got to enjoy what you're doing. And yeah, I love that. Take step by step. Is that like, like, go ahead, try. Well, I was going to say, I feel like I, that's something I like battle with all the time is that balance. Cause I, I feel like I'm pretty even keel and just like chill about it, about everything through the highs and lows. But then I'm like, can I be, can I get to that super elite level if I'm not like that, you know, like neurotic about just like everything being perfect and like, you know, I guess putting in all the right work, but it's good. It's good to like hear you say that Misty, because you have reached kind of the, the top of it all, even with that I, same you know, kind of chill attitude. Yeah. And I think you will. It's what do you work on when you're away from the court or like away from the spotlight, you know, or matches that's going to prepare you for the next one. And that doesn't mean that like if, and this kind of is the trigger when an errant pass goes, you know, awry, you have players that are like, okay. Oh, and they tighten up. And then it's like, mm -hmm. you know, you're like, oh, they're going to nail this ball out of bounds. Like they're not even, it's like their mind just goes, they don't even track. Right. And that's where I think the confidence like, okay, Aaron, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to make that one mistake. It's like, okay, now it's just my turn. Now I got to deal with it. Right. Oh, yeah. And said so everything, if you line up everything to be perfect, and my dad told me this, if you expect a certain outcome, everything to be perfect and it doesn't happen, you get disappointed. But if you don't expect that outcome, if you, or, well, obviously we want that outcome, but right. if you don't expect it to happen and it happens, you're like, wow, that was, you know, that was a great. Right. Yeah. I remember. But I you was, put the work in, you know. Yeah. You, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Well, that's, that's where like, the confidence comes in like shanking a pass and being being like that ain't shit like i've passed <laughs> thousands you know but i put in the work i don't have to worry about it but when in the back of your mind you're like did i put in the work then it's then i feel like that's when it's easy to get into your head when you start questioning it do you think that that even keel mindset is do you think that's a learned trait or you mentioned you know that's maybe that's my hawaiian side maybe it's a little bit of both something that you were just it's just kind of natural that came to you and something that you learned as well i think so i mean both my parents kept me very level-headed and that the, the group i surrounded myself with um but i think it's learned because you have to learn to shake things you know learn to shake things off you have to learn how to deal with pressure you have so i think it's a learn um learn kind of trait and it's harder yeah. for some people than others to learn you know to not let things affect them or show the emotion and i like to look at it as like a poker player and that's what i'm saying like if i'm playing a team and i tell these young girls as soon as they see your shoulders around or this or they see it affect you yeah man it's like an animal then you're gonna you should just keep attacking that person but if behind a lot of us wear sunglasses if you just don't show like it's rattling you the other team's like what the heck you know, and yeah. then they're like, do we go the other, but like, what's going, you know, what's going on? So I like yeah. to think of it as a poker because I want to see, we knew when we played the Brazilians, once we got them arguing, we were like, okay, we got this in the bag. Yeah, and it was still right. like maybe four, three, five. Right. But as soon as they started arguing, it was like, we got this. Yeah. Because they let it show, like they showed us their hand, you know? Yeah. Right. Okay. I like so. that. <laughs> That's what one of the things that my dad, because he coached me in basketball my whole life, and he, I would get, you know, I was a point guard, so if I turned it over, I'd get really mad at myself on the court, and he's like, all right, if, if you see a guy on the other team who's, like, almost in tears because they turned it over, like, who are you going to go put the pressure on? He's like, that guy. Right. So yeah, I feel exactly. like, it, like it's such a good point to play, try you're a little bit different with Trevor, where you guys kind of, you're good with the emotions on your sleeves in a good way. <laughs> um Cause you guys, well, kind of yeah. like <laughs> well, for it, it's balance. It's balance. Too. Cool. Cause I have to, I feel like Trevor will just do whatever he's in his own zone. He does his thing, yeah. but I kind of like to use that to our advantage. Like, okay, this pr player gets better when you go at him like that emotionally and this player gets worse. So like Trevor right now, I need you to bring that energy at me, not him. Cause how the song gets better if you, 
he plays better if you go at him. Let's not yeah. wake the beast. <laughs> Whereas, like, you know, these other guys, some German guys or whatever, it's like, go ahead, Trev. You're, I'll unleash you. Just just go at them because they, they get so flustered. I think but, it's just like a, you, know, you got to pick and choose a lot of the times. Yeah. Misty, you mentioned that, you know, as long as, you know, when it, when it came time to play, it was almost the results are, are pretty much out of your control is really the work that you put in um, that you guys just wanted to make sure you didn't get outworked um, either in the, in the lead up or on the court. What did like a typical like training week look for you and Carrie or you and Holly? Um, like how did you balance kind of the, cause a lot of athletes, they'll work, work, work to the point of almost overtraining. Yeah. Um, and that's always such a tough balance for players to find. It took me about, I want to say maybe eight years, seven, eight years to actually figure out what I needed. Yeah. Like what my routine, my lifting, my every, you know, what I needed. Um, with Holly, it was different because I felt like, I mean, we trained five days a week, a couple hours, but I was doing a lot of driving and I thought driving was my rest time and driving is, and as athletes, they think, oh, because I'm driving an hour to wait. It's like, that's my rest. It's not rest. Yeah. Right. Um, so you learn to kind of balance it out and like, oh, let me, as soon as I'm off the sand, maybe I go get a snack and then I go right to my list so I can get home earlier. And the trainings change too. So it's hard to like put the, like from my last year to first right. year together because a lot of training techniques have changed, um, all that. But we'd go two hours, five days a week, I would have lifting or PT. Um, same with Carrie. We, I was always pretty much driving up to Manhattan. We did practice with Troy Tanner at Emerald Bay in Laguna. Okay. Um, but always driving up there. I um, tried various different workouts. I did athlete performance. I tried lifting on my own. I went to vert. And uh, what I found that worked best for me was I'm always an Olympic lifter. So I, that's how I train. I treat me like a football player, like a running back mm -hmm. or something, and I'm good to go. Like, that's just my body type. And mm -hmm. I know everybody's different. Um, what I found was in the off season. So from November to February, when Matt was, we had a home in Florida because he was with the Marlins for a while. We found a trainer out there who worked for Chris Carter. And so I train like a football player, but from November to mm -hmm. February, I do all my speed and conditioning and my, uh, lifting to build bulk for season because once season starts that's not the time to build bulk you're just trying to maintain because you end up losing weight actually and yeah right um, so we would do that I wouldn't touch a ball from November to February so I got back really? out to LA I would not touch a ball why because we're touching it so much it's like let me focus on doing other things Pilates uh the speed and conditioning um all that then I'd get back to LA then I'd start ball okay. handling um, what about what about it. like um, in the off season? Did you guys do film work? I know film was not as popular as it is now, but so, just because it wasn't as easy, I think. I have not like indoor. I I swear I did more film indoor than I did. Speech. Right. And yep. it's hard to explain. Like just I know everybody's different. Even when Carrie and I were together, we'd watch film, but I prefer to watch practice film on myself than my opponents. I would rather get a shot chart from our coach. So Marcio, I, I did better when he would just give me a shot chart and tendencies. The reason being, cause if I, but Carrie was opposite. She liked, you know, watching the video and right. what the team did. As a defender, I always thought it was harder for me to adjust watching Germany play Japan because Germany is not going to do what they did right. against, you know, Japan or whoever they're right. playing against us. So I always had a harder time you know, locking in on defense. Whereas if right. I got a shot chart, then my mind, I could just play a little freer and had a, an easier time adjusting quicker. Yeah. And you like to watch your own practices, like watching yourself and your own. Tendencies? I like, I like watching myself, you know, Oh, I see how I took a step to my left and then, you know, missed that ball to my right. And we wouldn't film all the time, but I like when we watch game film, I like to see what I'm doing to make corrections because that's what you want to do. And that's how you make right. the outcome different is yeah. quit doing the same thing. You know, if you're doing the same thing, yeah. watch yourself. People have a hard time critiquing themselves. You know, mm -hmm. they, a lot of people want the positive. Oh, what am I doing correctly? You got to see what you're doing absolutely incorrect 
in order right. to be able to change. And that's hard right. for some people to get. They don't want to see the bad. They want to get. They want to see the good. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I just, for me, the film I preferred the shot charts. I'd watch a little film, you know, just to see how they were coming in, but I didn't want to totally lock in on um, totally. watching that. When when you would get a a shot chart. Like what, what were you looking for? Is it like that maybe what shots are most effective for you? What shots you go to most often? Cause I feel like there's so many, var there's so many variables on the beats, like where the wind is blowing, that's going to affect whether you hit a high line better than a cut shot or. So this was for the opponent. So that's why I didn't like watching oh, okay. video because I don't know, are they playing in wind? Are they playing not like, right. Uh, right. is she a hundred percent? Is she not a hundred? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know. But what I keyed in and what I loved about Marcio was, and this is where I think a lot of the players have a hard time, is they think they have to get everything. And it's like, you don't have to get everything. You have yeah. to try, but you can't yeah. get everything. Mm -hmm. Play the percentages. And a lot of players don't play the percent, you know? They're like, oh, I see she's coming in. And in your head, you're like, I would go line. So I'm going to start going. And it's like, no, but that's not that player. You know, that's right. you. Um, and so I liked it because as a defender, then it allowed me to focus on two spots as opposed to three, the cut, the hard hit and the line. It yeah. was like, okay, how, you know, play the percentages. If you, you know, they got to, and he brought up a good point. He's like, they got to cut 21 times to win the game. <laughs> you know, if right, yeah. they're weak at that play or they got the net to battle with if the wins in their. So for me, it was like, don't give up the easy one. And I watch film now. Yeah, and I get upset because I'm like, oh, I just got to go for it. And I think that's where a lot of players make mistakes is just make the move, and they don't understand that even as a blocker defender, you don't have to block everything. But if you get a hand on it, the hitter starts to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you there's different ways of blocking. Same with defense. You may not get there, but as long as you make the move in the right direction and you touch it, the, I guarantee the hitter goes away from that shot, even though they could have gone to it again. It changes the opponents. And you didn't yeah. do anything. You shanked the ball to the, but they're like, oh, she's on me. Right. Yeah. I got to make it sharper next time. Right. And that's where <laughs> now is um, the offense, right? Now is if we're playing offense, how many, my dad will call them AB players. They go to the line, boop, they make, and then they're like, oh, they're going to be on my next boop. Yeah. I go B. <laughs> and then I go, boop, right. A. And then B. Instead of like, if I hit the line and they're not getting it, keep hitting the line. Right. Yeah. But we trick ourselves out of like, it's like, oh, oh, I saw her make the move. And I went, no, keep going. Make her up. Keep her honest. Right. right? Or keep him yeah. honest. And yeah, it's such a men it's like, I love the mental side of it. I think it's so fun because in your head, you're like, they can't let the high line go again. How's this still <laughs> working? <laughs> you know? So I, I know just watching the women's games and watching some of the replay, this new generation of players, and I know some are still on tour. I would like to see them learn more of the finesse game. I don't think all of them have, a lot of them live and die with the power. And I think that kills them because I look at these games, I'm like, there's so much court, all you have to do, you know, but yeah. everybody wants to hit the ball or power and they hit at the wrong time. And so I think yeah. the this new generation, they get so impatient, they just want it now. Yeah. And yeah, That's... they're more powerful, they're more physical, but they don't have the shots and the finesse and the that the past yeah. had. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I feel like I had to really challenge myself to learn that or implement that this last event in Long Beach. When I, I think you were calling one of the matches against Phil when we got smashed and I'm just kept hitting balls. Uh, I'm pretty sure you were calling one of those. Um, <laughs> so I wonder what that dialogue was up in the booth, but uh, <laughs> For the final, when we finally got back around to them, it was like, you don't have to get a kill every time. Just don't let Phil block it to the ground. If, if Nick digs it, now we can rely on our defense and he has to transition. So I was going over, around, like really just spreading the court out, using the finesse game against the guy that, I don't know why, but my ego wants me to just smash a ball against Phil Dahlhauser. I'm like, ha, I did it. But if he blocks, you know, a fourth of them or a third of them, then it's, terrible for our team but um i totally had to switch my it was like hard for me it's hard for me i feel like it's i do hard, a lot yeah. of shots and then i get into the game like i'll do 90 percent shots in practice 
I get into the game and I start hitting 90%. Well, and the, the mistake is, and I've made the mistake too, is you don't want to go into a game shooting. And I've made that right. mistake because it's very hard. Once you go into a game, very hard to pull the trigger. Your timing just saw, and it's, right, so you still right, have to right. go in aggressive, you know, to open mm. things up. But there's so many different ways you hit off the block, soft off the block, you know, hit high hands. And one of my favorite plays that I used to love is when I go up and just finesse it into the block and then pass it up and carry come in for a two. And you yep. don't see that too often. Or, you know, even now people learning to joust. I, I hope, and I could be wrong, there were very few jousts that I lost and maybe being right. a setter or, but players don't know how to do that anymore. Yeah. Wiping. I mean, there's so many, if I was playing Pavin and she's a great player, but I would probably ask for my set wide and just try to use her hands the whole time. Right. Well, it drives the block nuts. And then they start doing this and yep. the defender doesn't know what to do. And, uh, yep. you know, yeah, for sure. I'm taking it's... taking a lot of notes. <laughs> <laughs> Misty, I appreciate it. <laughs> well, like as I know as a blocker, I and I totally agree. I feel like there's not that many players who can like I I don't I don't win every joust, but I never lose a joust. It's either I push it onto their side or I'll cover it for the most part, you know. Obviously we all lose some here here and there, but I feel like a lot of players just are either either I win this joust or I'm gonna lose it, you know. Rather than just yeah, they don't I'll understand. Just, it's like the last right. person to hold it. Lock your shoulder and you just hold. You want to be the last yeah. person to push, you know? And it's – well, it's also – first of all, I know setters are always good at jousting. That's something I remember from indoor. Setter I, – I guess you guys just get a lot of reps <laughs> at that. Um, Tight passes, but, you know. It's like, yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> right, exactly. Um, where was I going with that? Uh, oh, well, just as a blocker it's that's there's nothing more frustrating than winning a joust especially when you're like that big meaty blocker that thinks it's cool to win a joust and you're like ah, i won and then he just plays it and then just smash it down your throat you're like yeah. oh wow that that sucked <laughs> losiak and cantor are so good at that just using yep. the block just poking it back in like you were talking about misty where you would just light into the block put them up on two and like they even they'll run like a shoot set off of a joust where they know that yeah. they're going to be able to reset yeah. it and win those were like my favorite yeah. and carrie knew coming i was like okay perfect like yep. you know yeah but yeah. You, but you have to practice those so um i'd work with my dad going back to the training it's like we'd have our practice sessions and i'd have plyos on certain days i was still lifting three days a week and then i'd work with my dad twice a week and we worked on all the little things hitting cut shots from like 10 feet off the net uh and definitely he's been like my longest standing coach but i'm very thankful that he is knowledgeable in the game and he's very old school but work on everything so i'd block and i'd have to touch it back you know throw it back to my partner i'd yeah. touch it to myself and then be able to set a ball and you know you work on every scenario even though it might play might happen once in the game yeah you work on every scenario. Um, one of the things he always likes is we dig a ball and I shovel it into the net, you know, to yeah. buy myself a little extra time. And that's something right. we just worked on. But yeah, you have to work on every aspect of your game because you never know mm -hmm. what, totally. you know, when you're going to need it. Yeah, because especially because it's such – like beach can be such a weird game. There's so many just strange things that happen where nothing – it's never going to be perfect on the beach, especially because when it gets windy in the afternoon – how do you try to practice everything though? Cause like, if you try to do every skill, every practice, I feel like it'd be like five Not every practice. Like, no. like yeah. kind of hyper-focused on like a couple skills of practice think, and just spreading yeah, them out. I think every practice, I mean, Marcio would do a drill and we'd do the, he'd maybe come up with two drills and we yeah. do the drill on every side, you know, so it was really only two drills, Yeah. but I think at practice, and this is one thing that didn't, that helped that with that, my mindset was you can't, work on everything all the time so if we're working yeah. on pat you know you work on passing you get a little better passing that day then you work on your setting the next day and then you work on you know hitting the next day you try yeah. to focus on everything you're going to drive yourself nuts because it's like oh two minutes on this three minutes on five minutes yeah it's too much yeah. But yeah it was all the it was all the and i'm not gonna say like all the off plays i guess i would work on you know so hitting yeah. hot hitting off the hands that then i could break it down with my dad and slow it down and get a couple more reps um working on i'd be on my knees and he bomb balls and i just got to dig with one arm you know i don't mm. we don't do that in practice but it was like okay that's an important skill because when you're dropping off you need to get people need to get hit with the ball and realize it's right, not gonna yeah. kill them right 
And then you just, right. it doesn't matter. Your hands aren't together. Sinjin was very good at it. But those are things that your coach, you may not be able to work on practice, but you can work on your own. Yeah. And so you, you're, you trained five days a week with Carrie, but then also did like two practices with your dad. So you did some double days. Mm-hmm. I that's like awesome. that. See, and, that's that's and, what I've been missing. And that's what, because then we just break down skills maybe that I want, you know, like the one I'm yeah. digging and just different things. And I, mm-hmm. I'd incorporate that with the ply, like plyos for the day, but then we could just break down things. I see why he didn't plyos. touch a ball for a couple months. <laughs> huh? yeah. I see why he didn't touch a ball uh, for a couple months. <laughs> I just mentally, cause you're going all the time and yeah. it's not that I don't love the sport, but I think to get your mind off of it, it, you know, you need to just go away for a little bit Step from away. it, and then yeah. right. that's uh yeah. that's Tim Baumgren's thing. He he loves that because he lives in Minnesota. He's like, I literally can't touch a ball. It's it's already snowing there, so he's pretty Not much saying done. I would be in the snow. Like we were in right. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. So he he literally can't get out there, but he he's he's like, I think that's one of the reasons that I'm able to just dive in every summer is because i miss it so much that i get back and like it's all i want to do and then once summer ends like i'm pretty content to go back into like full-time dad mode and doing my engineering thing so he right uh, and it and it definitely helped for me to live outside of the volleyball bubble so for work sure. for me was in manhattan and then i was like whoop drive to long beach yeah right it's good to have that so. separation but for sure. you try, you mentioned that, you know, Misty might've been calling a couple of your matches. Um, it was fun to hear you uh, stepping into that role. Um, I try, I tried my best. I was like, Oh gosh. <laughs> I remember I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty good friends with Sarah Sponsel and uh, she was like, Oh my God, I talked to Misty today. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. And then, um, you know, I kind of gone away from Facebook, like social media for a little bit. I'm like, oh, it's just, I feel like it's getting so negative and just, I don't need yeah, that yeah. vibe and totally. I don't need to see my friends yelling at each other and all that. Totally. Um, but it was funny because when I was doing the announcing and I didn't understand, but I don't know if it was old school volume. They're like, oh, what's this wrist away? So I was very cautious. I was like, I'm not going to say wrist away when I'm, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm announcing. Really? I'm like, thumb down yeah and then it ended up i think it was just you know interesting yeah it was just thing going back and forth with um you know people on facebook about wrist away why they keep saying wrist away you know just yeah "Eh." that's funny it it uh... ended up just being like back and forth but i was because i had read it i was like oh i don't want to i don't want to get my name thrown in there i'm not gonna say (laughs) wrist away (laughs) i think try try it some of my favorite heckles when he started announcing uh some of my buddies from florida were like all right drink every time try mentions he's from hawaii <laughs> I know. well i thought uh i thought that i didn't really ever, i was doing every match in a row like the whole day basically and i i was thinking of it like i had a new audience each time and i don't know i guess that's all i had to talk about <laughs> <laughs> but i remember like someone yourself, held up a man. sign at one point <laughs> yeah exactly You're and i was from by hawaii. myself no but uh, no, I liked it. It was fun. And it was fun to be back in the mix again and be around the athletes. Uh, I mean, I probably got some negative, but a lot of people liked my feedback because it came from like the player's perspective and not saying that Dane or Chris or Kevin aren't a player, but um, I hopefully was giving some insight and people liked it. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was. Uh, that's what I was going to ask. Was it, uh, was it good to be kind of back in that environment again, just kind of around the tournament and watching. Um, I know obviously you'd been involved uh, with Long Beach for a while and you coached a little bit on the side, but um, I feel like that was probably pretty fun for you to step back in uh, to that kind of role. I mean, very few players that I know on the tour. Yeah, everybody's mm-hmm. like, but uh, it made me feel old. I was like, oh, I wish <laughs> I could be back out there playing. It looks fun, but I was like, oh, am I old? But no, it's good to be um, around the energy. And I thought, you know, Baby P put on a, it. It was great for the athletes to be able to get out there and play. Yeah. Have sure. you have you thought about uh, the possibility of one day coaching, um, you know, a, a professional team and traveling around with them, or is that kind of a a, a chapter that uh, you're past here? No, I don't. I mean, 
Is it out of the question? No, I enjoy giving my two cents, whoever will listen. And that's the whole thing is sometimes athletes, they don't want to listen, but um, (laughs) I like sharing information. And if I can be a positive to, you know, to this next generation of player, um, great. I, don't, I, I can't tell you, I know in the next few years, probably not traveling. And I, I can't even tell you this whole pandemic is changing the scope yeah. of everything. So right. who knows kind of what's going on? I mean, even now, you know, I've seen in, I mean, I'm sure they'll still go on in some aspect, but what's going on with the Olympics? I mean, I don't know. And just from a consumer standpoint, the commercials have kind of gone by the wayside. So to me, that says, yeah. I you know it's hard to it's hard to say i mean i would like to see them go on but there's a lot of things we have teams still in the qualification what i mean did they just get their knees cut out from under them like hey you can't go and yet they still had a chance to go like what who's going to answer all these questions our country's not going to go you know like it's changed the whole the whole scheme so i'm not sure so as far as traveling yeah who kn- I mean, <laughs> who knows? What anyone's who knows? Doing. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, there's some definitely some countries I'd love to get back to. Like Switzerland was always one of my favorite tournaments. Yeah. And Austria. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the things I miss. People are like, "Oh, do you miss competing?" And I don't miss the com the competition. You know, I miss seeing my friends from the different countries. I miss seeing the fans that you see yearly. I miss yeah. the travel as far as seeing new parts of the world, but I really miss the practice. Cause that's, I think that tells you more about yourself than the right. competition is the practice, yeah. but I really miss seeing the different parts of the world and filling totally. up my passport. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was talking to um, Jake about that. And I was saying, are you kind of excited for just to like stop traveling and be around more often? He's like, I actually love the traveling part. I know like Phil, he's just ready to be done with airplanes for a while. Yeah. So like for me, I haven't been on a plane. I can't tell you the last time I've been on a plane. We're going to go to Hawaii. I was talking to Tri uh, last week and we're going to, our family is planning our first plane trip. Um, I want to take my family to some of the places I've been. That's what I would look forward to. Granted, there's some stops that I'm like, I don't need to go back. I'm, I'm right. good, you yeah. know, <laughs> but like sharing Switzerland, sharing Austria, I have friends in Norway, you know, being able to go to those with my family and let them see where we've been or played the Olympics. That would be fun. Yeah. But right. yeah, I, I have to some ways agree with Phil, you know, yeah. but yeah. it was kind of nice. I hate to say it. So when we first started, it was planes, trains, and automobiles, much like everybody that starts out. Right. And then you realize, oh, that economy, you know, we're flying from AVP or international, international, it's not a lot of rest. And this is when they used to serve food on flights. In fact, yeah. when Holly and I right. played, I got stuck in the smoking section of the flight. So they were still smoking. <laughs> Holy cow. You know? Yeah. And this was an inner China flight. And I was like, oh my gosh, we had blankets over our head. But um, I'm not going to lie. Once you go up to that front of the plane yeah. <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard to go back it's hard totally. to go back. Um, and that's as an athlete I mean that was one of our goals was okay we gotta make money or get an appointment so we can rest and go on our like business class or first class yeah. so that's like yep. a perk to flying but um yeah those are the traveling days we've done the overnight train we've you know we've done yeah yeah, sure, you have plenty, those. plenty of travel stories. Oh, adventures! <laughs> how long, uh, how long did it take to kind of make it to the front of the plane? Because I mean, you and Holly were obviously great, and then you and Carrie went to a, a level that really is unprecedented by athletes. It was, yeah, it was when Carrie and I were together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Because uh, Holly and I were together uh, just for a little over a year. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay. And um, I had to borrow money actually to go to for our first AVP event. I borrowed from a local organization in Long Beach and I ended up paying them back and I give to their organization, but I had to borrow money to go to first AVP and borrow money from my parents to travel international. And back then I would buy the all around the world ticket. It was like, if you kept traveling in a certain um, path, 
you could pay like one lump sum instead okay. of going oh. back and forth. Yeah. So um, if you just kept going one way, which we did because we were playing only international events anyways, yeah. and we were in qualifiers. Right. Holly and I would get second in tournament and to qualify, double elimination qualifier. And oh. So, um, but it was when Carrie and I started doing well. And okay. then two, a lot of players and a lot of fans don't understand, and this is where it hurts the volleyball player as well, is a lot of our money do, does come from sponsorships as well, you know, to help yeah. cover expenses. So, yeah, the prize money is there, but a lot of um, the expenses are really covered through nice endorsements. Or Yeah, yeah. That's, that's something I'm super interested in. Obviously, like, from the beginning of my career, I've been wanting to get to that level where I, where I have really good sponsorships and basically just, like, taking advantage of the business of being a professional athlete. And that's something, like, I've always thought is really cool. And I feel like only a few athletes, at least within the last, you know, not counting, like, Karch and them because I wasn't really – watching volleyball at that time i know that they they did a good job at it but you and carrie and i mean april as far as i'm concerned todd did pretty good with it it seemed like you guys really like embraced the business side of being professional athletes was, was that like something specific that you really wanted to do like you just loved the idea of being a professional athlete and being having i guess like having an impact uh beyond volleyball I like, think it just comes with the territory. Like I always tried to focus on being a good person and a good goal model and a hard right. worker and all, you know, everything will kind of um, yeah. take shape from there. So it wasn't, and I always align myself and I can't speak for everybody, but I always align myself with companies that when loyalty is a big thing for me, yeah. but companies that align with my values, you know, so it has to align with, what I'm about or my values and there's a lot of athletes out there that I don't, will sell their soul and it's like on to the next on the in there yeah. and All that's right. where you kind of, everybody kind of has to work together because everybody has a part if there's an athlete that's undermining the business then it just devalues everyone else yeah know? exactly so but it's hard at this point because everybody needs the money and is like oh I'm going to take whatever deals out there and so it's a different time too. I, and that's what, you know, you're working with a different time. And I saved some of my old contracts and paperwork just so I could compare and see. And it's amazing. Yeah. Um, right. You know, but it's just a different time that you guys are kind of yeah. in, the, in the sport. Do you feel like there's a little bit of a sense of responsibility? Because I feel like on the women's side, you guys – you guys at the top had a little more success, I think, over a long period of time. But some of the men, I don't feel like took advantage of their clout, I guess. Or like, you know, like the impact that they could have had off the court. And like maybe bringing the men's game up to a higher level. Whereas I feel like you guys did a really good job of bringing the women's game to a really high level in terms of like where you are on the, in terms of American athlete, like you guys are on the spectrum. You guys brought the sport onto the spectrum of respected professional American athletes. Whereas I feel like there was a little, the, the men quite didn't quite get there over the last like 20 years or so. And it's tough if you look at everybody. I think personalities too have to do. Right, big time. It. And one of the things I always thought, and I have um, talked to a couple people, is even the AVP is, um, there's not enough personalities. Like I, I, it's hard for me to explain it, but yeah. um, like EY had a great personality, you know, got the crowd involved and just, I think people need to let their personality shine without overdoing it. Like don't right. just throw person, don't make up a personality or don't be yeah. yourself, but have fun with the sport and have fun with the people and interact and don't just go to the players that, well, now it's difficult, but it's like, I used to sit in the crowd and people, you sat in the crowd, it's like, yeah, I just talked to people and hung out and I didn't separate myself. And All I right. think I, from the few events that I went to, when it was the big stage, I felt like the athletes separated themselves a little more from the, the general public, which if you want your brand to build, 
you have to immerse yourself. You, you have to be, right. you know, and I don't want to say like, don't put yourself on a pedestal because we all are like, oh, we're great. But you have to make everybody feel the same way. Right. You have to be right. like, I feel like, like you had like a little literal physical presence, which I think is so important, especially in today's climate where everyone's just on social media and just trying to get value that way and interacting online, which has some value. But I feel like you sitting in the crowd, just talking to people and being around them. I feel like that's one such a cool experience for them. Um, but so good for you too to just like interact with them and like be super humble and they get to see like who you are. You know, I think and it that's was awesome. different too because a lot of our tour stops and I can't remember the layouts you had, but everybody that was out of the tournament would sit on the stage. Like all the players would sit on the stage and watch the finals and hang out. And now it's like, oh, I'm out. I'm leaving the event yep. for the day. Yeah, totally. So I I feel like the you like the togetherness. It's like still not as tight as it was back then. Yet people. Yeah think think it is or fake like it is but it's not and it, yeah. it felt like a big family before and we were all happy for you know yeah you're going to be disappointed but we all got along we all hung out and you you've seen those like on the state Vita would be on the stage and everybody's like the men's player yeah. everybody's like sitting yeah. on the stage watching and yep. there wasn't a yeah. rush to go anywhere it was like no this is happening now and did you i wonder go ahead Dry. go ahead now oh, you go i'm gonna say um did you find uh like because you and Carrie were so dominant. Um, what, were there any teams that like were kind of tried to get under your skin or like tried to create a rivalry or was it, did you guys just command so much respect that that was never really the case? Um, I don't think so. I mean, we always Holly and EY cause I'm a former partner of Holly and then right. EY is so fiery. But at the end of the day, we walk off the court and I was like, well, you know, friends. Yeah. but you want to kill each other when you're on the court. Right. And then you had April and Jen. It's like, you know, so they're always going to be rivalries, but off the court, it didn't feel like anybody was um, out for blood off the court, you know? Okay. They got along and it was like practice. Maybe you didn't practice together. Some did, some didn't. Yeah. Um, We'd all go to meals internationally and hang out. Uh, I think that's where some players get into trouble. And especially when Carrie and I were together was teams were always trying to find that right uh, combination without giving it a chance. You have to give your team a chance, right? You know, but you have a lot of teams. Oh, we didn't do well this one trip. We're gonna break up. It's like, well, no. why don't you go back to the drawing board and figure out where you fell short and work <laughs> right. on it, learn how to communicate, or you know, give yourselves a chance to go, do this. That's what we yeah. did. I mean, you you have to work through it, but everybody wants a quick fix now. You know, yeah, yeah. That's where they get into trouble. They just you and Carrie, when you first got together, so your first year, you're obviously successful. I think it was 2001 was your first. Was our year. first year. Okay. And we then, won one tournament. Uh-huh. And then, and then, which like for you and Carrie, it seems like, oh, wow, like what a bad year, you know, just one win. But then you, you like, you guys really jumped up from then on out and you became like the Misty Carrie, pretty much unstoppable duo. What did going back to the drawing board look like in those early days with you and Carrie? And then like, how do you sustain that? Because, I mean, that's one of the most incredible feats in sports, I think, for you guys to do what you did for such a long period of time. It's so, so cool. Now, yeah. So now that I've had a chance, like I said, going back through those tapes, I see how we were as young players, and then I watch how we were as mature players and the development. It was kind of neat to see. And I have never been able to reflect. And now that I have stepped away and been able to watch, like, April and Alex and Sarah and Melissa and – uh, Ludwig and her partner it's like we did it for so long and I think that's what made us a great team was we were able to sustain uh, and that's a sign of a great team but now you have teams they like win two and then it's like a fall off and then it's like oh uh, where are they gonna oh they did what? fall off and yeah. that just showed like we held each other accountable we had the same goals um, same mindset we gave each other space you know we each had our own personalities and our own lives. Um, and I think that's what made us stronger was we valued each other, but understood and respected each other's differences and didn't try to change each other. Right. Um, but we would, you know, obviously we went through three different coaches too. 
And that was important, finding the right combination. Dane yeah. was great at the time. We were young players. I'm going to tell you, that first Olympics, we lived off our physicality. We just, I, I mean, I watched the video and I'm like, there was no game plan. We just went out there and played. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we just played as competitors and together. Then it was like, okay. Then we found, we kind of plateaued. It was like, what do we do? Okay. Do we change? No. Let's find a coaching change. that will bring something fresh. In. Okay. So Troy Tanner, not a typical beach coach, but then he broke down our passing and we worked a lot on siding out and, um, you know, so we started to kind of Zen, he Zen us and tried to tone down our game, you know, uh, be more efficient and all that. So then yeah. he was good for us in that aspect. Boom. We got to, um, he broke down film, gave us game plans. So China, we actually went in with some game plans. Of yeah. <laughs> what we're going to do. So we looked a little more organized, you know, in China and a little more um, fine tuned. Then it was like, okay, we won that one. Plateau. We didn't know. I thought that was going to be my last game. Didn't know what was going to happen. Carrie had kids. I got hurt. Then it was like, okay, let's come back together. What do we need? She was already working with Marcio. It's like, let's bring Marcio. He brought something different to the table, a different energy. And then you saw our game really kind of mature to where it was like, we didn't win every point. Didn't We won one tournament leading into the Olympics, but we had a, a, a path laid out. And we knew as a mature athlete, it's not about how you finish up. It's about the long road. Where do we want to finish at the end? Mm -hmm. You know, and how do we want to progress? You saw each tournament, um, Liz Masakayan had us lay out our tournaments like one through nine and where, and you could put them in any order. So our first tournament, we could have said, oh, we want to win this tournament. And then you had to explain why. Right. And she, her, um, hers went like one, three, seven, like she, her as a coach because we worked with her for a little bit um hers was kind of all up and down and she gave us reasons and then carrie and i hadn't talked to each other anything ours was exactly the same we went one being our worst and building to number eight yeah which was switzerland mm -hmm. and we won in switzerland and we wanted to win that last tournament because that sets the tone for the olympics the yeah. last one sets the tone for the olympics we weren't the favorites going in by any people didn't think we'd medal. Which is but so you leave crazy. a lasting impression. <laughs> but it showed our maturity level because that yep. could have flustered us so bad in the beginning, like, oh, we gotta win, we gotta win, we gotta win. Yeah. And it was like, no, we'll we'll get there. You know, let's just keep working. And talking about going back to the drawing board, you know, we'd sit down with the coach after a loss or whatever, and we'd sit down with each other. What went wrong? What do you need more from me? What do I need more from you? What can we work on? Boom, go to practice. We work on what what we were short on. Yeah. Before we even went to the next step. And that's yeah. where a lot of players, they want to run before they walk. And then it's like, right. they don't want to, even though they um, had a bad digging, they don't want to really work. On it. It's like, okay, get through our digging drills. Now can we play? Yeah. It's like, no, right. <laughs> keep working, you know? Yeah. So you get better and then, you know, you make yourself 1% every day better. And... Right. I feel like the two things I'm hearing is like being able to adapt, like figure out, keep refiguring out what you need after each tournament or whatever, like throughout the benchmark. But then also communication. Like it sounds like you guys were, first of all, women tend to be much better at communication than men. <laughs> um, but uh communication is so huge i've learned like just being able to tell your partner where you're at what you need like the things you were just saying and your partner uh, has to be so, able to take it too because not listen, everything's yeah. gonna yeah not everything's gonna be what you want to hear but you got to be able to take criticism and then um being vulnerable i think carrie and i were very good at that because if i was carrying my legs or so i'm can you help me with this middle pass mm -hmm. no problem i got it but so too yeah. often, everybody, I got it, no problem. Mine, 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 you know, you just shank three balls to the left. I got right. it, no problem. No, just scoot over, let me, let me help you. Okay, let me scoot over. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing, totally. there's nothing wrong with it, you know. And um, totally. I think one of the worst things, too, I see is a player, and I'm going off base, but a player will shank a ball or two, and then they switch sides right away. It's like, why don't you <laughs> just figure out what you're doing with your platform first before you yeah. <laughs> switch yeah. sides? <laughs> 
throw we're it gonna all keep away. going after we're gonna keep going after you i mean i don't yeah know, yeah which is fine but the server's coming right back at you <laughs> right <laughs> you seem to have done like such an amazing job like with like just limiting ego like oh carrie i'm struggling like can you take this middle ball when you're winning as much as you do like how do you kind of keep the humility in check as well as you did and keeping the ego down. Cause I mean, you guys like you, you would have had like every right to walk into a tournament and just being like, yeah, like we've just won the last 10, you know? So like, how did just mentally, how did you stay so humble and like hungry to do those five practices plus two with your dad, plus the three lifts. And I just think, um, like I said, you just, you don't want to leave the court with as like, if I would have, you know, I'll lose because the team beats me. But again, I don't want to be like, huh. Now, if you're tired, as I got older, my recovery took more, you know, took more days than my physical work. So I learned yeah. to balance more recovery days. But um, there were times being number one for so long, your target is very big on your back. Yeah. And when you're, yeah. and this is what made us better. We had to be on all the time because, we played against qualifiers in go three. We've lost to qualifying teams. And when you're number one, a team that you're up against has nothing to lose. You know, so they're going to come at you. And that's where we, our focus had to be. Granted, we let, you know, there were some we let slide or whatever, but then that's where you use a timeout. So the side change or, hey, we lost that one. We got to refocus. And we'd always set goals to what, you know, what do we want the score to be? And, um, yeah. What did that, a target that big, uh, feel like, and when did you begin to, to feel that target on your back? Cause I'm sure it wasn't, you know, in 2012 that it was finally there, you know, you guys have been building it up for quite some time. I feel like internationally when all the other coaches would gang together, like, how are we going to beat this team? And the team like <laughs> powwowing and we're like off here, like training and everybody's trying to beat, you know, it's like, like okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do i remember when we uh we used to grab coffee when i first came out and one of the things you told me was like that is it's lonely at the top right like what did, what did you mean by that specifically from my perspective it was like you have to be able be willing to put in all the work that other people aren't willing like a lot of people want to be in the gym with other people or you know putting in practice time when other people are there but but you would seek out those times when other people weren't putting in the work to yeah to do so it my, or that's something my dad would always tell me and he said it's only the top and I you know he's like you'll understand at some point but that's like where you're doing your sprints at four in the morning maybe the only time you can get your track work done is four in the morning and be out there by right. yourself right you know cool. uh sometimes people you know it, a lot of the teams power on Carrie and I would be eating by ourselves why because people get you know when you we're as successful as us then people start to kind of you know not that we're intimidating but then people are like oh we don't want to be around them so we eat by ourselves right. like yeah. we're starting to deal with it you have to right. honor it like okay not we're creating this but we're gonna be just fine but most of it was doing the work behind the scenes by yourself without getting the accolades right making sure you take yes. care of your stuff and a lot of times it's by yourself right do you, think, do you think that uh, like, cause you, you mentioned that you miss competing. Well, you don't miss competing a ton, but you miss the practice. And I feel like a lot of people love the competition side, but look at training almost as like, as work, but you seem to like really love the training aspect of it. Like, and it, for just from the way you've been talking about, it, like, it seemed like you loved the 4am track workouts, you know, or. Oh, you know, well, I didn't, I didn't do 4am. Well. <laughs> I'm just saying, no, but I would do track workouts in the morning. Like one of my hardest track workouts was uh, my coach um, Armando would give me, it was eight 200. So if I ran a 200, let's say 30 seconds, I got 30 seconds rest. To walk okay. back, and I'd start again. So it was like a one-to-one. -one but it was eight 200s and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is the worst. And then we do Hills and time, you know, there were other bad workouts, but I loved the weight training when it was like my time, like in Florida and I'd be like, Oh, I maxed out on the clean or, you know, my goal was to do pull-ups. It's hard yeah. for girls to do pull-ups. And I wanted <laughs> to do like, not these ones, but I was like, Oh, yeah. I want to. And I was able to do 10, you know, but that was like my goal. Yeah. But that's because I put in the work practice. 
getting balls bombed at you and yeah. you know your coach is, is working you harder why because then the game should be easy right the game becomes more of a thinking the work is you know practice yeah but that's what made it fun was because the coaches would challenge us and it's like how are you gonna live out are you gonna get killed on a short serve and then kick a ball and be like <laughs> i don't do that or cheat up and be like oh i know they're gonna serve me short no work up right. like how are you gonna push yourself so that's why i say i like the hard you know the practices yeah because yeah. you're gonna get you're gonna be behind your coaches are gonna make you work harder than you think you can mm -hmm. seems like you're job yeah, I was gonna say you it seems like you just have like such a good growth mindset was that something that you know maybe your dad or parents instilled at a pretty young age because I'm sure that you grew up kind of competing and playing sports and and learning all sorts of new things was your dad big into hey like you know maybe that one didn't go as planned but you can learn something from that yeah both of my parents my mom was a tennis player and then she learned volleyball and then my dad my dad was hard he'd make me like push the car like our stick car and then move out of the way and you know, he'd take me and run hills and he'd, <laughs> he'd put me in the corner and bomb balls at me. And then I, I mean, I think one of my best gifts was I got to play with the guys. So like Wilt Chamberlain down at Santa Monica and everything. Back then it was work up courts. We don't have work up courts anymore. Maybe Outrigger, I think yeah. maybe still does, but everybody has their little, oh, we need to force them and we go down the beach and we play. And right. No, you, you showed up at Santa Monica. You had to write your name on a, um, like a tablet and then if you lost you sat for like you could sit for half the day until either somebody wanted to be your partner or you got the, if your name you know you got back to your yeah. name and i think that's what helped is like it's like oh okay you don't want to waste time and be that anchor and i was playing you know i underhand serve and i play with guys on the guys net from an early age and i think yeah. that really helped soccer we I'd play co-ed because some of the teams didn't have girls. So mm -hmm. I think in all these athletes, I think playing multiple sports, I played basketball. Um, yeah. And so I, I got to play different sports. I think that's what the athletes are missing these days is that they're made to commit so early Yeah, playing multiple sports, but then too, it's okay to get your nose rubbed in it. The only way you can get better is if you get your nose rubbed in it. Cause then you hate losing. You hate, you know, that yeah. feeling. So you want to change. But everybody... like a lot of... Sorry. Sorry. Well, it just seems like a lot of people don't play for something a lot. Like they'll show up and just play. But like back in the day, it was like, I'm not going to get to play for the rest of the day if I don't win this. So I'm playing for something. Or like, like we've been doing a lot of betting, whether it's five bucks, Brothers Burritos, or 200 bucks. We don't want to lose to each other, you know? But just having that little bit of something makes it. Uh, okay practice into a great practice mm -hmm. yeah i think that's like something that at least our small group right travis we've yeah. kind of learned that lately nothing like, hurts so doesn't... bad as venmoing trevor crab <laughs> yeah, yeah we gotta bet something what two bucks okay let's do it fuck that i'm not losing two bucks. <laughs> yeah i think that pressure is good i'm curious misty do you think because i feel like athletes not that they're necessarily kind of motiv motivated in a binary way but there's always that love for winning and hate for losing which way do you think you kind of fell on that more of that distaste for losing or that like you just really love that winning feeling and obviously it can be both i mean it's nothing bad i mean spraying champagne and having a sip of champagne after you win it's like oh this is wonderful um and then being able to you know the paycheck that's a that's a paycheck yeah um but again because things could be so much worse. My dad taught me when I played soccer, like there's somebody in a hospital bed or, you know, you get kids getting being, getting bombed overseas and things could be yeah. way worse. So you lose a game. It's, it's a game. I'm walking away with all my limbs. I'm walking away with clothes. I have a home to come to. I have shoes. I can have a hot meal. Some people aren't, you know, as fortunate. So that's why to me, it's like, win or lose it i hate to say it's still the same thing yeah the paycheck's the paycheck still the same thing right. you know and hopefully when i win the joy shows and you have somebody that's watching tv or it can allow them to escape whatever they're feeling or doing for that moment in time and i can help bring them life but at the same time you lose it a game like i yeah <laughs> i can't explain it any 
more and that's what we're trying to um get with our daughter because she's six and wants she thinks every time we leave the house we have to have a toy you know she's got to have a toy and it's like there's a want and a need you know Mm -hmm. do i want to win yeah do i need to win no because i can still you know go home and i can right yeah do you think that that mindset helps helped you sustain such a tremendous partnership for so long that like like you mentioned you know a team loses they're like maybe first tournament together and they just got to break up and erase it where you can, you seem to have that bigger picture in mind that kind of, we mentioned at the beginning where, you know what we lost and we're going home with all of our limbs and you know, what? we were at the beach today and it's important. And you know, what? we can go back to the drawing board. Life is okay. <laughs> I think I was at, I was at good balance because Carrie, she wears her emotional eye sleeve mm-hmm. and she hates losing, hates losing. Mm-hmm. So I was like that balance, like, you know what? Okay, we lost. Let's get back, you know, back yeah. to work. And But she would let it carry on for days and day, you know, and um, it would affect her. Yeah. You know, and I think she's gotten better at it. But um, so, th- so there's two different personalities. Yeah, for sure. There. And two afters, how do you deal with the crowd? So you have people coming to the games and, you know, you lose and you get people that just storm off. It's like, no, people tend to watch you it doesn't matter they they don't care if you want to lose they came to see you as a person and happy and um you know stick around for them because yeah. you're teaching that next generation right and, and I, that's i i feel like that's going on in our world today it's like every it's like if we model ourselves after the top people and they're just bickering back and forth and yelling and saying negative things about each other it just I mean, it allows this new generation to kind of be like, oh, this is, <laughs> so yeah, totally. even when you're indoor coaching or you're coach, it all stems, you know, it's like the captain of the ship and goes down. So if I lose, it's my job to show it's okay to lose. It's okay to lose and stay humble and get out there and have a good time with the fans. It's almost I like that. I have to, I was thinking I have to teach my kid, not that the current presidents will be the president once she starts learning this, but I'm gonna have to teach her like, okay, the president of the United States is not a role model. Don't think of it like <laughs> that. It's just a business person or something. You know, you almost have to teach it's it just, in that way right now. I mean, now. you see just people treat, and not even our president, but just the way people treat each other too. It's like a, society's gotten very funky. That's all right. I can say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gotta adapt. <laughs> Um, but I, I think it's very clear like that you succeeded in that, you know, like you're, you're the captain of the ship and that, you know, you, you need to be that role model. Cause I think when you look at someone like Sarah Sponsel, who was so excited just to chat with you on Amazon prime and I cover a lot of the college beach volleyball and, you know, I'll, I'll talk to him like what got you into beach volleyball and, you know, eight out of 10, and it's Misty Carey, Misty Carey. And so it's, this is sort of like, and this generation's so talented at the college level, which I mean, you've seen plenty of it at Long Beach. Is it really cool for you to look at that and know that you played a pretty sizable part in just how good, you know, these 18 to 23 year old girls are and they were inspired by watching you in Beijing and London and Athens? It does, you know, I feel like we paved the way. I mean, there were certainly players before us that paved the way and that's, it was our job to take the torch and kind of continue to carry it. Now the players, now it's their turn to take the torch and continue to carry it. Um, so I feel like our job, we were just one of the pieces of the puzzle, you know, and just our success it happened at the Olympics. And, you know, I thank TV for highlighting our sport too, because that um, and prime time and that made us very successful. So, I mean, everybody's had a piece. It's just, we carry the torch for a pretty long time. Yeah. And we're able to, you know, pave it um, for the young ladies. How crazy is it that Carrie's still out there carrying the <laughs> torch on on the court? <laughs> All I say is God bless. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my God. I got, I'm like two years out of a metal knee. I got a kid. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I, mean, I, just, I just go to Orange Theory. I'm a walker now. I don't even run. Yeah. So. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> like I like the baby cord at Outrig would be like perfect size for me. If yeah. that, I might need hey. another person on my side, but that's like perfect size. Yeah, it's ready. For, it's ready for you. It's right so, there. 
Uh-huh. Are your uh, are your kids getting into volley? You mentioned your how old's your oldest? Six. Six. Okay, and then your yeah. Your so twins she's into three? gymnastics right now. Yeah. Okay. So she likes gymnastics and she likes swimming. Um, since my dad called her a lump at one practice, he calls people "Hey, you lump," and like she was teaching yeah. I guess people how to floss, and then it was her turn to go, and he wanted her to demonstrate something, and he's like, "Get out of you lump," and so she never went back to playing because the tutu called the grandpa called her a lump um <laughs> and then the twins i don't know they're dancing i i started dancing when i was little so i just i just want to introduce them to everything yeah see where they go you know from there and it's pretty hard now just with everything going on a lot of things are shut down so it's like whatever activities we can get them involved in do it is dad still uh coaching here and there yeah he's like out he's coaches um kids on the beach takes his little portable net and coaches kids (laughs) on the beach and he's out there golfing from time to time so So smart i would call him up to do those two days a week practices he'll be he'll be 79 on saturday november 7th so 79 yeah well happy early birthday to him (laughs) oh my god actually i always laugh i'm like well he was around when pearl harbor he was only you know like he was a year old when pearl harbor like, Jeez. And was he, <laughs> dang, was he born in Hawaii? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Born and raised, right? St. Louis High School. Yeah. Till he was 16. <laughs> I went there for a year. Oh, oh till he was 16, right? Um, That's But funny. yeah, so I always laugh. He tells me about rations. He'll tell us about all his crazy stories when they used to push his dad's car out the driveway and down the hill and um, <laughs> different things, so. Wow. That's I mean, he, he was born. He was get. born in Hawaii when uh, the Royal Hawaiian, I think, was like the biggest hotel. I think that was like the right. only hotel or something. Like. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, Outrigger was down there next to the Royal Hawaiian. It used so. to be. Dang. Well, there's sure our next podcast. Swim. I'm sure you used to swim in the. Is it the Natoria? What's the swim? The like natatorium. The little, yeah, yeah. natatorium. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dang. That's crazy. So. What uh? What's next for you? I know that uh, I, like you you mentioned that you've taken this time to kind of center and focus on like you know the the big things that are important and full time mom and and walking around at, at Orange Theory. Um, do you have a, kind of any designs on what the next couple chapters of life will look like for you? No. Well, during this, I got I got bored, so I was like, let me try to see if I can get my personal training certificate. So I did. So I did that. Um, no, it's just organizing our house and. Right now, it's putting Halloween stuff away and getting ready for Christmas. <laughs> so it's like the next big yeah. thing. But um, no, I don't. I mean, I don't know. There's a different boards that I'll serve on or that I've been asked to serve on. And nothing. I mean, just take at it this as point, it comes. I can only go, yeah, like month yeah. to month or day to day. So. Yeah. What's uh, it. it's been it's been awesome uh finally getting you on I'm I'm glad that uh you two were oh I do we have connected well up. yeah team team uh what is it slays is that what they're called slays yeah <laughs> yeah so I they sent me videos so I'm supposed to do some dance I'm supposed to learn to dance oh that's them. right Sarah said uh, be the music uh, video <laughs> yeah so I gotta I gotta break right. that down so that's the next big there thing is to make trainer that's, that's the next <laughs> big thing. <laughs> Love it. Now you're big time. I know the three Olympic golds, pretty good, but music video with Kelly and Sarah. I just hope I don't hurt myself. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Can you guys um, hear a siren from my headphones? Can't hear one from you. Not really. Just, no. just the birds. There's, there's a um, tsunami warning. Tsunami siren. warning. Yeah. Oh, really? But I checked. It's, it's the first weekday of the month, so it's we're all good. They're checking it. <laughs> you always go look like if it goes off any other day, you're like, all right, I should probably yeah. go run up that hill over there. <laughs> anyway. Um, Misty, thank you so much for coming on. We no got we'll, we'll get you on your way, but this has been awesome. And I now that we mentioned your data, I really want to get him on as well. That would be a classic yeah. episode. Yeah. Oh, he's crazy. <laughs> In the best way. Perfect. I, t- like I actually want, told just what we want. um it was a, I don't know if I was communicating, I think it might have been, I don't remember if I was communicating with uh, Trevor Taylor, but I was like, oh, Matt, because Matt drinks whiskey. And I was like, oh, Matt saw your show and he wants to get on there. So he's like, oh, yeah, we should have you guys on. And I'm like, oh, Matt, they said we could go on and, you know, talk with them. And he's like, I said, but I don't drink whiskey. 
And he's like, no, then you can't go. <laughs> like, no. Okay, so then. <laughs> but yeah, so. Oh, so Matt's going to get on there? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> but I had thrown that. it out there to them. I was like, oh, I'm a perfect oh. person for it. <laughs> they would be stoked, for sure. So Love it. But yeah. Well, thanks for having me on. Glad we could connect. Yeah, thanks and for taking the time. It's been awesome. For no sure. problem. It's been great and uh we'll uh we'll be in touch and uh yeah thank you no worries yeah good luck with the decorating and uh thank you <laughs> and the music video don't hug yourself right the music <laughs> i'm looking forward exactly. to that one. be careful <laughs> i will all right bye all right. shoots misty later misty bye Cheers.